Hey guys, Stefan here from Project Homegrown and uh, today I just want to give you a quick update and give you a bit of a, a garden tour to show you what I've been up to in the garden and to show you some interesting things that I've noticed and things that I will be doing differently and improving in the future. Today I will be giving you a quick garden tour to show you everything that I've been doing the last few few months and what I've accomplished and how I am systematically upgrading the garden system with the produce that I've been selling and using to expand my system step by step. So just to give you a bit of background information, the layout of the system is actually not designed for soil planting but actually to facilitate uh, aquaponic system one that I've been planning to build for quite some time and I'm just making use of the tools available to me at the moment and then I gradually expand and then systematically convert sections into the aquaponics as I am moving forward by planting soil based in the aquaponics layout it also gives me a bit of chance to to have a look at the the efficiency of the the layout to see where I'm gonna have hiccups with moving through with uh, with harvesting is there enough room that sort of thing the walkways just to make sure that it is actually uh, practical because sometimes you can design an efficient system on the on paper but when it comes to the practical side of the things it's not always as useful as you thought it would be uh, this so i see this sort of a dry run so that i can be sure when I finalize the aquaponics installation that everything is where I want it to be. As I am funding everything for the expansion with what I am currently growing, it is a slow process. And my end goal will be to actually try and do a profitable farming project on small scale in my backyard. But in the meantime also... To share the knowledge and the experiences through the gardening and share ideas and also get ideas from other YouTubers. So I thought it's about time that I started adding into the community that I've been getting information from for such a long time. So I'll be sharing with you what I've been putting my heart and soul into. I've been doing all the work myself. And I'm inviting you guys along the journey from scratch to hopefully success within the very near future. So without further ado, let me show you guys what I've been up to. So as you can see, I have covered my entire backyard in a 40% shade net and I installed it by planting these poles that a friend of mine was so kind to allow me to go cut it from his farm and I did not have to purchase any of these uh, posts that I used for the mounting system. What I did to fasten the, the net to the side walls is I just bent pieces of rod into a U-shape with a ring and then I just slid it underneath and the tension upwards actually holds it in place 
and then I just hook it in there. It's been on now for a full season. And it just helps to keep the pests under control as well as all the heavy rain and wind and especially hail that we do get a lot of. This is the lemon tree that I did a air layering video on and it's going quite well at the moment. I don't know if you will be able to see it, but the roots are actually starting to protrude through the bottom of the, the containers that I used, which means the roots are actually establishing quite well. I want to trim this tree down to shorten it quite a bit because it's too high and I don't like the shape and I want to do a lemon tree bonsai. You can see the idea is I want to train all these new shoots as my main branches after I cut off the top sections of the trees after the root balls have established enough for me to, to do so. On this lemon tree I did have quite a bit of aphid issues and along with aphids we all know is our friendly foe, the ants. So I treat the aphids just with a normal soapy water and that usually keeps it under control and then I just took some of this old gearbox oil and painted around the base of the, the tree and that stopped the ants from climbing up the lemon tree and spreading the, the aphids substantially but never underestimate the resilience of ants they within the first week after I did that there was a significant reduction in the ants in the area but they very soon realized that this supporting post that runs the cross wire for the net touches on one of the branches and they immediately rerouted the whole colony to just travel up and down this piece of uh, polia. So I ended up painting that with the oil and that fixed the problem temporarily and then the resilience of an ant is never to be underestimated. They are now traveling up and down that wire to the top and then climbing back onto the tree. It did reduce their efficiency. So the, the ant presence is much lower and I can definitely see that the aphid colony has suffered because of that which is what we wanted so all I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna take some of this oil again and I'm just gonna Cover the side of this wire. I don't think that they will try and climb 
on the net to get to the, the tree but the aphid colony has been dying off and I will be continue treating it with the soapy water so hopefully within the near future there won't be enough aphids to produce that honey like substance that the ants are farming from them so this situation is quite under control at the moment moving on the gooseberries are doing quite well and this is one of nature's little presents giving us sweets covered in a wrapping and there's just loads of ripe fruit that I can start harvesting I planted this in a pot that I made from recycled cardboard and then just filled it up with my homemade compost. I went and made a lot of cuttings from that plant and I've got loads of rooted gooseberry cuttings everywhere and then I've got quite a few in the pot on that side as well it's actually overgrowing this section and I need to cut it back a bit here's a, a blueberry plant that I am going to be making a, a cloning video of pretty soon I want to take that and turn that into quite a few plants the same way that I've done with all these different gooseberries and then I've also got some aloe that I'll be transplanting as well and rooting the jam squash are doing quite well and they are just about ready to harvest I do have a bit of a powdery mildew issue on them but I will be taking out this plant this weekend anyway we've been plagued by lots of rain we had about three weeks of constant rain so these beds are going to be aquaponic uh, deep water culture systems but for now I'm just using the bricks to to help me maintain a border between the grass and my grow space and I'm just planting normally in these beds and it also helps me keep the dogs from running through my my plants and then destroying my seedlings I've planted rows of Swiss chard here but with the last three weeks of heavy 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 rain they did suffer quite a bit and I see they are not doing as well so both of these beds are going to be deep water culture beds and then my fish tanks are gonna be stationed on that concrete slab there at the moment I'm using this as a a seedling station and also where I'm keeping my my cuttings 
So at the moment I'm using this platform as my seedling station and I'm also storing my cuttings this side because it's a little bit more in the shade with not as direct sunlight and this is probably one of my favorite smelling plants ever it's a jasmine plant I've made this from a, a cutting that I took about three months back and it's rooted quite well and then I've got some more of some of my leftover peach tree cuttings and then this was just a, a trial for my blueberry cuttings and it rooted as well so now I'm going forward and I'll be doing an update video about how to do the blueberry cuttings. I've got a bit of cucumbers going on here together with my tomato plants. Vining them up the, the trailers that I did a video about. I'm planting my vining plants up against the face of the house because it's just a more efficient way to make use of the space available and it also gives us a bit of shade in the summer when the house gets quite hot. This row down here will eventually become uh, media bed that's going to form part of the filtration system for the aquaponics so the fish will be on top of that platform that side these will be the deep water culture beds and all along that bed we will be building the the media filter that's also gonna be basically just a media bed that's gonna operate on a flood and drain system. We do have quite a few of tomatoes that should start ripening up pretty soon. I reckon maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks before we can start taking off quite a bit of tomatoes and then the cucumbers have been giving us a steady production of cucumbers and I've been pickling a lot of them as well these two beds will also be become part of the aquaponic system at the moment I'm just covering the the beds with this liner to just help me with the weeding that is probably one of the best ways to keep your weeding in check while your beds are unplanted and this will save you Lots and lots and lots of time de-weeding. This was my previous mustard spinach bed. And when they went and bolted, I just chopped it down and I am covered it up with the liner. And I'll be mulching back that little bit of organic matter into this terrible drainage clay swell. Just to assist with that. Here yeah, I've got some more gooseberry cuttings, all have rooted, if I were to pull one out you should be able to see the roots form. I probably shouldn't do that but I just wanted to show you, I've got 
more than enough to go around and I'll be making more so sacrificing that one not that big of an issue so the idea is the fish tanks at the top platform there's quite a bit of a slope the deep water culture beds the media beds all of it's gonna drain down to the sump tank this side which is the lowest point in the system so that's it guys this is the the beginning of my backyard farming project there's a lot of work that went in to get it to the point where it is now but it is nowhere where it needs to be so hopefully you'll join me along this journey to see me succeed step by step building it from the ground up to make this a big success and to build this into the most efficient system that I can possibly make. On to the next one guys and then I'll see you next time.